Well, the Silver Ferns have got a very tough schedule coming up in uh, just under a month's time. They're off to South Africa where they will play four matches in f- just five days in Cape Town. It's some kind of dress rehearsal, I think, for the uh, World Netball Championships, which will be going to South Africa, I think, for the first time uh, next year. And this quadrangular tournament, I suppose you could call it, uh, involving New Zealand, England and Australia and the home country, South Africa, is going to give, uh, I guess, all of the teams, the visiting teams, an opportunity to suss out things like the facilities and accommodation and, and the courts. With me now is uh, Nolene Toru, the coach of the Silver Ferns, who I'm sure is probably looking forward to this trip, even though it's tough because she's got uh, four key players back who have been away for either injuries, maternity leave or on sabbaticals, and I think it'll make a big difference. Nolene, a very good afternoon to you. Are you looking forward to this really tough assignment? coming up next month? Yeah, I, I am. There's there's a few things that I'm really looking forward to. One, I've never been to South Africa. Um, we did, you know, like uh, back in back in the days when I, I was playing, but I actually missed that era. So I'm excited by that, um, travelling over there. Um, it's a dress rehearsal, as you mentioned, uh, for Netball World Cup, which is going to be July, August. Um, not only from, you know, playing against the opposition that will be playing up against, you know, countries who are in the top six, but also for the administration side, the event side, uh, noting that they probably don't have the same resources as we do. So it's really important that uh, we can sort of get out there and, and hopefully learn from what happens in January in regards to logistics side, but um, really looking forward to the netball and uh, the opportunity, I think, to play England, Aussie and South Africa again uh, is just good timing for us. Mm. So what are you looking for? I'm trying to think of a dress rehearsal. Uh, a netball court is a netball court. It uh, doesn't matter where it is in the world. Uh, what, are, what are the things that you will be looking for? Is it like transport or accommodation or support uh, support factors? W- what are the things that are, yeah. you'll be looking for? Well, you know, the things that we take for granted here in New Zealand and Aussie and even England is, is as you say, the netball court is a netball court, but they don't actually have a netball court. <laughs> that is uh, that is um, uh, not concrete based, you know, it's wood and floor, but also a venue that has the size of a proper netball court. So, I mean, that in itself, they have to get the netball court um, imported in from England. Uh, netball, so they picked that up. But also, you know, um, when you're looking at even the timekeeper, the, you know, um, the rules, you know, those sort of things, when you're not involved or haven't been involved as South Africa and haven't actually held a major event, you know, making sure that all those cobwebs are blown out and everyone knows what they need mm, to do is a good mm. starting point. So, um, as I say, things that we take for granted definitely is not like that over there. Um, and I think, you know, because we know that we're going into that, our mindset, you know, we've got to be a bit more adaptable, maybe. Um, go with the punches, uh, you know, lights may turn off, but just go with it and, and be prepared that um, there might be a bit of uncertainty out on court. Um, alongside, obviously, the game. So um, that's probably as much as we can be prepared for. But probably the the, the big deal for us is getting on court against yeah. the opposition and the quality of our opposition. Also, I wonder whether your experience as a player, you went to Jamaica in 2003 to the World Championships where things weren't quite necessarily the way they've always been in New Zealand or Australia and you had to cope with all sorts of things uh, there which were slightly out of the ordinary and in the end you prevailed and won the world title there. Do you think that experience might serve you in good stead in South Africa? Yeah, I I believe so. Um, You know, like when I look at the selections of our current team as well, um, what we know and we've always known from the past, not only through netball, but also other sports that, you know, when you're going into a pinnacle event like the Netball World Cup, experience counts. And it's because you're going into countries that there are unknowns, um, but also your ability to be mature and, and still do what you need to do. Um, and, and the ability to be able to adapt in, in certain situations. So, you know, we've got a very mature squad um, and with myself and Deb and, and the ability to know what, you know, what's, what's real, what's not and, and to be able to roll with the punches, it mm, certainly helps. Very important. 
Mm. Uh, in times, in mm. certain times. Mm. Exactly. Rolling with the punches, just taking whatever comes along and not taking your eye off what you're there for. Okay, so for this Definitely. for this squad that you're taking to South Africa, uh, you have got four experienced players back, uh, Jane Watson, Karen Berger, uh, Gina Crampton and Claire Kirsten. I think I read somewhere where collectively they have 165 uh, test caps behind them. Can you quantify for me what difference having four players with that sort of experience, 165 caps, will do, uh, what difference it'll do to the performance of the team on the court over there? Oh, look, um, I would like to think, and I know you can talk it up or I can talk it up, but what I would expect, once again, is our ability. We don't really have to worry about the strategy as such. We've been developing or we know the strategy and have been sort of tweaking with it over the last three or four years. Where I'm looking for is our, our team to be able to control the momentum out on court. And for that to happen, you've got to be quiet in, a, as I say, a mature space. Um, have a bit of experience behind you, but also don't get caught up in the individual stuff, keeping your mind open. So, you know, with with that maturity in the squad, the experience there, that allows us to to maybe look at our game a wee bit differently, um, definitely predict what the opposition's going to do and how we can uh, strategize and hit them first before they hit us. Mm. <laughs> That's basically it. So that we have the upper hand, you know. So there's a lot in that, and that is definitely the intention that I'm heading towards, not only for January, but the Netball World Cup as well. Um, and I suppose that's why I'm, I'm a bit excited by it all because, you know, we haven't had that calibre of players that we've currently got uh, through various things, injury, pregnancy or whatever. Um, and uh, just to have that substance behind us is, is really exciting and yeah, comforting, I think. It's, yeah. it's like a comfy blanket, actually. It's quite nice. OK, yes, it's good that uh, you're coming up um, and you're going to play these four matches in five days, a sort of rehearsal for the kind of uh, congested programme you'll have at the World Champs. Um, and you're coming up against uh, two of the top teams in the world, England and Australia. But I wonder how much shadow boxing might be going on here, Nolene, how much each of the three top teams, perhaps not so much South Africa, but the three top teams will want to hide things, won't want to show their hand and reveal, you know, they're necessarily their first playing uh, seven and things like that. Shadow boxing, is that going to be part of this cat and mouse game in, in Cape Town? Well, you know what, usually it is in pre-season, but I'm going to take a different uh, what do you call it, a take on it. Um, probably over the last maybe three years or since the Netball World Cup in 2019, we've had either retirements and, as I say, pregnancies and babies and all the rest of it. So maybe for about the last three years at least, I'm not saying that we were shadow boxing, but not that we were surviving, but we were getting ourselves through through trying to build the depth underneath and develop players and give them opportunities. So, um, you know, this this January camp is massive for us because we've, we've got a lot of power, I like to think, in our team. I actually want to hit them. I, I really want to go hard on this tournament. I really want to put our presence out there and... Um, because we've got the, the players that are coming back in who haven't been involved in the 2022 international arena, we've got to just put the best that we have out there. One, to give them some legs behind it and, and for them to uh, remember what it's all about. But secondly, for us to really put our presence out, you know, and for everybody to say, hey, look, geez, the Silver Ferns are looking really good. So at this moment of time, that's where we're at. Um, when we were going into 2019, I wasn't showing the, all the cards, and that was because our lead-in was a wee bit different. But I think now we've got to start to dominate, and we need to start to get the confidence in ourselves that we are capable of doing that against the world's best. By OK, I hear what you're saying, but by the same yardstick, you'll want to give, is it 14 players you're taking to South Africa? So you'll want to give all of them as much court time as possible, won't you? So doesn't that work against this idea of going hard with your, your best players in each game? Yeah, I think um, I can still work a good foundation of players. Um, what did show, once again, was the adaptability of individuals who can play over a couple of positions. 
but I've got to do it quite delicately or quite balanced in regards to keeping the foundation really strong so that I'm not changing all the time and being quite strategic about what we want. Um, and that links into predicting really what the opposition's going to do, what individuals are going to do, and targeting certain things out on court. Um, so I still feel that I can do it um, with the current forwarding that we have. And once again, having that mature um, addition to to our current squad, that makes a difference to that. That gives me more confidence that I can go into that round. And are the players themselves, the 14 that you're taking to South Africa, are they on trial in a sense? I mean, you haven't obviously named your team for the uh, World Championships, the World Cup next year, but I guess players could play their way in or out of that uh, uh, World Cup squad, couldn't they, uh, on this tour of South Africa? Yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. And to some degree, I don't think, especially the younger players, probably understand that stuff yet. Um, you know, every time you do put on the black dress and get that opportunity to get out on court and, and play against an international team, it's like uh, money in the bank. You know, it's an investment that you're putting and one that you put yourself out there and, and we know that you can perform, but also to show after that that you are improving and you're shifting your game. So I, I believe it's been a trial since Netball World Cup in 2019 um, and will continue so uh, once we come back in January from uh, South Africa, we go into domestic competition so, you know, we've got another six or seven months before we have that big dance. Mm. And we want to make sure that the 12 that we finally take, one, deserve to be there, and 12, and they're the best possible in New Zealand. So you can't rely on history and you can't rely on your name um, because it comes back and bites you when you need them in finals or semi-finals. For sure. I can imagine you'll be watching very closely every pass, every every movement of every yeah. team, as all the other coaches will as well. Anyway, I wish you well for this tough but short trip Thank that you're you. about to make, uh, Nolene, and uh, all the best also later in the year uh, for the World Champs. And it's been a pleasure to talk to you again after a few years. hope we can do it again yeah. sometime. Brilliant. Thank you for your call and take care.